earlier when discussing strings, we introduced the concept of a sequence in Python. So lists, although um, are thought of the most general version of a sequence in Python, unlike strings, they are mutable. That means elements inside a list can be changed. Uh, that's the difference between a list and a string. A string is immutable while a list is mutable. So in this section, we'll learn about uh, how to create a list, uh, how indexing and sl uh, slicing lists work, just like we did in strings. Uh, we'll also look at some uh, basic list methods. Uh, we'll look at uh, nesting lists, and uh, I want to introduce you to uh, something called as list comprehensions. That is something we'll look at it uh, in a, uh, very deeply later on in the class. But for now, I want to introduce you to the concept of list comprehension. So uh, it becomes easier to connect at a later point of time. Let's go ahead and see how we can construct lists. So I'm going to fire up my notebook, Jupyter Notebook, just like this here that you can see on the screen. And uh, now I'm going to uh, type uh, certain things the way I can create a list. So a list can be created simply just like the way you do a string by giving it a name. Uh, and we use square brackets uh, to create a list. And uh, I'm going to give it some values like this. And then we just created a list of integers. But lists also can hold different object types. For example, um, it may not be only numbers. So I'm going to take, take this, and I will add an apple. Then I will add number 3. Then I will add something called, uh, let's say, hmm, a jet plane. Um, just anything that you fancy. And then I'll put some numbers. Uh, or I can put something um, floating as well. So it can hold a whole lot of things. So just like strings, we can use the length function. Uh, I'm going to say length and pass on the parameter, which is the name of my variable whose length I would like to measure. And it returns to me as four, because there are four elements inside my list. and um, I can also do uh, many other methods, just like we did in strings. Um, let's see what happens if I, if I have to uh, slice it. So I'm going to create another list, or edit this list, and say um, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6, and 7, and 8, and 9. Let's make it 9 like this. Oops. OK, so I have a, a big, really big element uh, that should be good enough for an example. And now I call upon the first element, which is 0. And it brings me uh, the first element, which is 1. So I want to call upon, let's say this is, I'm going to change this to hmm, something. And then I call upon 0, 1, 2. So I'll say my list and say 0, 1, and 2, and it brings out that. So I can also do um, slicing the way we were doing in strings. Uh, let's see what happens if I do my list, and I say colon 1. So this grabs the first one except everything else. And I put the same thing, the colon after, then it prints out the opposite of it. It, it grabs everything except the first one. So we can also use uh, the plus sign to concatenate. So I can say my underscore list. And I can say uh, plus, I can add new item. And then it's, it adds new item. I can also assign this whole thing like this. So I can say my list is equal to my list should have a new item. Now. There is something else we can also do. So I can, let's say I want to grab the first element. Let's explore how immutable or mutable this is. And um, I want to take the third letter and I want to replace it with a string called, um, let's say, orange. And now I want to print my list. And this will print. You can notice that orange has come in the place of uh, the third index. So that is uh, uh, how one of the methods work. Um, and then you can reassign and try out um, 
a uh, few other things. We can also use the duplication. So I want to say my list multiplied two times, and it will give you uh, the output multiplied in, in steps in, in two, two times. So that is something to do with uh, uh, something basics about my list, about list. Now, if you're familiar with any other programming language, you might start to draw parallels between how arrays in other language and lists in Python work. So lists in Python, however, uh, tend to be more flexible than arrays in another language for two uh, main reasons. One, they have no fixed size. That means you know, a strength can be as long as you want it to be. And there is no fixed uh, type constraint. Uh, like we saw above that and I can add a type or number, I can add a number type or a string type or a float type. So anything can be put into list. And they're also very much mutable. So that makes uh, lists great to work with. Uh, let's do some methods, uh, basic list methods and some examples. Uh, I'm going to create another list called L and I will give it one, two, three. And now notice I made a mistake. Uh, so this is, a, this became, um, this is not, this is a set actually, but this is not a list. So I need to give it a square bracket. Yep, I keep making these mistakes uh, repeatedly so I can show you how you can avoid uh, being making mistakes. So, so I just wanted to, I wanted to remind you that uh, we need to use square brackets and uh, that's how uh, Python will understand that you've created a list. Now I take this L and I append it with Let's say, okay, I'm going to give the name James Bond. I like James Bond. And then see what happens if I print, uh, okay, tuple has no opec. Uh, so this is not, this was not run, it became a tuple. Okay, great. So it, it, this should now, let's say print L and it should print that it has added James Bond. So if I put the square uh, co you know, brackets like this, it's a tuple. And then it also tells you, you know, if you make a mer s mistake and you're wondering whether what have I created, uh, Python always be, will be there to remind you that you made a mistake, and the error will errors will be precise. I can um, now c coming back to the methods. I can also pop something. So I just say pop is another method. I can pop anything by default. It pops the last one, but I can also control uh, what I want to. Uh, pop out by typing the index. So I say pop zero, then pops the first one. Let's see what is L left with is two and three because the first and the last one are, are taken off. So try this out, uh, try more of uh, uh, variables and then see how this works. And um, well, you can also do something like this. So it says um, something like this. I'm gonna create a popped item as a variable and then I will say so whatever you are popping out you assign it to my new variable popped item I can also do an assignment so that way my L is left with only two but three is assigned to another new variable so that is uh, how it is um, done so it should also be noted that uh, lists indexing will return an error if there is no element, I'm going to create another index. This time I'm taking M and I'm going to create another index. Okay, let's keep it at that. Now I execute this uh, so that it's stable in memory. So if I try to get an, let's say there are seven elements in this, right? So I'm going to call upon the seventh element, it would print. What happens if I call upon the eighth or ninth element that does not exist? it will tell you that index is out of range. So if you get run into an out of range error, that means there is somewhere in your list or you where you have tried to do something with the index or the sequence and the range is mi a mismatch. So you can always come back and uh, fix that error now that you know where you run into an error like this. All right, now let's uh, move on. Um, I can also do a sort list. Um, let me give some more spaces here so you know we have some space on the screen great um, let's create another index so I'm going to create an index called alphabets and just to keep it um, I'll cre create them as a B and I will have some random 
letters uh, just want to make sure I'm not repeating anything a G H Y T R X S X S Z V B N M okay that should do I guess uh, there is a method uh, that we can use hmm okay this is a string right so notice how I made an error so I'm going to try this again so always be sure of what you do right and I'm going to add something I hope some of you caught that error and um, it's you know it, it happens with everyone okay so let's uh, give it at that and now this is my new list of alphabets. I want to sort them up, uh, sort them. I'm gonna let's just make it more. Okay, I have a C here. Okay, so I want this to be sorted. So there is a method to sort, uh, which is a b dot sort, and then it, and then if I print a b, uh, it is now sorted. Oh, I have to run this again and then run this and we run this now we can see that the a b is sorted uh, so you can try out a few other methods uh, that are there uh, for now this is uh, good we're making good progress uh, let's look at how nesting uh, works um, nesting is a another feature of python data structure uh, that supports uh, to put a list within a list so that means um, we can have data stru structures within data structures. Uh, let's look at an example. Okay, so I'm going to create a a list, and I'd have something like this, and then I'll create a, another list, and I will put in some other numbers. Not that way. Okay, I have a problem with the keyboard, maybe. Okay, and then I have another list. Oh, all right, so now I have this. Uh, let's say I can have something called as matrix, which in which I have this list within the list. So I have one. Great. Now this is a matrix of lists, and we have a list uh, one, two, and three as lists, and matrix is also a list. Um, now I can use indexing to grab the first one. So this is the first list is grabbed. What if I have to grab 55 from list two? How do I do that? So I can do it like this. I'm going to do call the first one. So this is zero one, and then I will use double square bracket, which is a second square bracket, and then I will say zero and one. So this should give me fifty-five. So try to see if you can print six seventy-eight the same way, or try to print uh, sixty-seven the same way. So that's about how you do it for your exercise, and um, give it a shot. And uh, I'll be back in a sec and let. I'll show you how it's done. Okay, I hope you tried how to do that and uh, you were able to do it. Let's, uh, I'm gonna try this uh, to print 67. So I will first call the list number three, which is index number two. Um, okay, why do I have single quotes? Okay, I'll be calling list number two and I will call zero, one, and two. So that way I'm calling list number two and we call 67. If I were to print, uh, would call print 678, uh, this is how we do it. We're printing 678. I hope you understood that. Um, the final thing that we're left with is list comprehensions, which is a advanced feature that allows us to quickly construct lists. Now, we need to understand for loops to be able to fully understand 
list comprehensions. Uh, so don't worry if this if you don't completely understand or it doesn't make sense. Uh, just feel free to skip this uh, since we'll come back to this later. But I do really insist you just look at this. It won't take uh, a lot of time, and it, if it makes sense to you, that's great. If it doesn't, that does shouldn't matter. We'll be we'll be covering this later. So I'm going to create a first column, a, co a variable called first column, which is going to be our comprehension. And we're going to deconstruct the for loop uh, within a list. So I'm going to take a list and say row 0 for all is for all the rows in my set called matrix. Return every um, first. You know, if I have to return the f 1, the 44, and 654, I want them three in the list. How do I do it? Is by list comprehension. So, okay, I, I should say in mat matrix, and then uh, there is something I have made an error. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, for row in row matrix. So now you know what I made a mistake. So whatever you put here has to be put in here. It could be anything, say anything. And I have to repeat that here, anything. And now uh, I say first call. And this prints the first, the one, the 44, and 54, just like we wanted. So that's how we can uh, use the for loop to construct uh, list comprehensions that will help us to quickly create list from uh, a group of lists or nested lists this way. So I, I'm glad that um, uh, you were able to watch this so far and you were able to understand. Uh, so don't worry about it. Uh, we'll look at uh, next sessions and uh, we'll cover this in much more detail later on. See you in the next class.